before I start on this video, I'm just going to explain for people who may have missed it. If you look at my watermark on the bottom corner of the screen, there is currently a purple and teal butterfly that I've added to my watermark. This has been on there for about a week now and I've put it on there specifically to remember Abby and Libby. So most people probably are aware of the Delphi case but if you're not just to bring you up to speed in 2017 two girls 14 and 13 Libby German and Abby Williams were abducted whilst out just enjoying a day out on the trails at Delphi Indiana they were found the next day deceased and two years ago an arrest was made of Richard Allen and now we are up to the trial and there's been so much drama around the case in the lead up and even now with the court being sealed and everyone having to get information from people who have attended there's still so much drama so I just wanted to put something on my channel that is in memory of the two girls and just to honour their memory and also to show my support for the families of the two girls because right now what they are going through could be described as nothing less than utter hell. So that butterfly will remain on my watermark until a verdict is reached in the Delphi trial. But let's get back to Maddie. So you may be aware that there has been more FOIA requests released and that a number of creators have gotten a 501 page document which they are now discussing on their channels and I've just been watching Paula's latest video that's Plunder where she's discussing a few things from that particular document and there was one thing that really stood out to me I'm going to play Paula's clip and then I'm going to share my thoughts about it and just share a few other clips to support what I'm saying, I guess. Page 209 of 501. There's this Amazon fun new parents decision coin, double-sided mom, dad, turn coin. We've heard about coins before. But now we know Madeline actually sent the text message to Stefan that contained a photograph of the two coins. These are things I didn't know before. And I'm actually going to record my screen right now to show you guys how I figured this out. Page 486. Okay, record. There's a portion that starts talking about on December 16th, 2023 at 0047 hours. So what is that? 2400. So that's like 147 a.m. First of all, that's pretty early in the morning. I wonder if Madeline was on Christmas break then. But this is when Stefan has moved out. He should be back in Northport. So Maddie's texting Stefan. This is how I know it's her. Normally I had at first erroneously assumed that perhaps it was someone else. Jennifer texting Stefan you know, they're talking about conceiving a child. Is he talking about this with Jennifer? Or could it have been that ex-Disney woman he was seeing? I know she didn't have, she doesn't have any children. She's 40 years old. And I was thinking maybe it was her. She was texting him. I don't know. I know they didn't see each other anymore, but I know according to Gray Hughes Investigates, when he did an interview with that woman, and I won't say her name, there was discussion potentially, allegedly, of them conceiving a child. So I kind of, my mind kind of went with, oh, this is some adult woman, Jennifer, or that other woman texting Stefan about, oh, let's get these coins. No, it was Maddie, and it made me feel even more sorry for her. So what I'm going to show you is right now, I'm highlighting from the new document dump, this paragraph, and I'm copying it, and I usually throw it over on text edit. And so I'll show you here when I paste it, it shows on 
December 16th, 2023 at 1.47 a.m. And then even though it's redacted, blank sends a text message. When I copy the text, it copies over D-E-L-I-N-E. -E. So it's obviously saying Madeline. Madeline is sending a text message to Stefan that contained a photograph of two coins. The coins had the inscription of new parent decision coin and appeared to be from Amazon. Indeed, I looked it up on Amazon and everything. I have the link below. And the tripped out part is Maddie sent two follow-up texts. Maddie sent two follow-up texts to Stefan, says this new report, stating, we need this, get it for us, please. So they searched Amazon and the detective's report says, a search of Amazon for these coins revealed these coins are for new parents where one can flip a coin to decide if it is the mother's or father's time to complete a task for a newborn. Due to the fact that this conversation was not near Father's Day or Mother's Day leads one to believe Madeline and Stefan had possibly spoke about conceiving a child. I have to say, two of the things that I really love about Paula is the way that she does thoroughly investigate everything and the way that she she has ways of figuring things out which is pure genius but not only that she shares that with us so that we can see how she got there when she comes to a conclusion so it's pretty clear when you look at the way that Paula did it that the document was talking about Madeline and the reason that she was able to do that is that part of the letters were actually showing underneath the line that was redacting Madeline's name. So I noticed that in another spot, it just left a gap in the, um, in the text because it had been thoroughly blanked over. So in that one, you couldn't see Madeline's name. But let's talk about what this is saying. So Maddie found some coins on Amazon that are parenting coins for new parents where you flip them to decide whose job it is, whether it's the father's job to do it this time or the mother's job to do it this time. And from that, the conclusion was drawn that perhaps her and Stefan had been talking about the possibility of having a child together. This is, at the time, a 12-year-old girl, which is so, so very disturbing. Was that the case? It is possible. At 12, children don't understand the responsibilities of parenthood. And this is a girl who was very loving towards animals. She had a cat, she had a dog. She, somebody in the family, possibly seven, I don't know, but at one point in time, there was a pet sitting service and you could see an ad for that pet serv sitting service. You've probably seen the image on some of my videos. It's Maddie. Um, sitting on a couch with a, a larger brown dog lying across her lap. That was actually from an ad for a pet sitting service. Um, so we know that she does ha did have that love of animals. And, well, you know, 12-year-old girls do fantasise about interesting things. So maybe this girl who wasn't getting love from her own mother was fantasizing about having her own child sort of to as a surrogate for that love and also because she was in that relationship as she saw it with Stearns because her wanting these coins to me suggests that she viewed it as some sort of relationship. Did they discuss the possibility of her becoming pregnant or them having a child together who knows it could be that there was some role playing going on don't forget this is a 12 year old child 
and 12 year old children do do a lot of role playing they they practice for being an adult essentially so it could be that there was some role playing going on and this is just sick to think about but there could have been some role playing going on between her and Stefan where they were playing a mummy and daddy game or something and that that's just horrible to think of and I hate suggesting it but you have to look at where Maddie was developmentally is it possible that in December that Maddie could have been pregnant maybe it's not something that we're going to find out unless there is a trial but when you add that up against all the other things it starts to become really disturbing we know that law enforcement were really really pushing Jen about the possibility of pregnancy they didn't say it outright to her but they were very very interested in Maddie's cycle they had made a point of discussing with Jen whether or not she was tracking Maddie's cycle and when it was discussed that she was they then raised the fact that it didn't appear that Maddie had had her period at during February and that at the time of her death she should have been due for another one meaning that she had gone almost a month overdue for her period which is quite concerning they also asked Jen about pregnancy tests that were kept in the house and did she know how many were meant to be there and were there any that were missing and I thought that was super interesting as well it made me wonder what the answer was to that um, because Jen was really vague about that so we didn't really get any answer from listening to that interview but it made me wonder if perhaps they had found a pregnancy test in the rubbish or perhaps there was one missing or what the story was but I'm going to draw your attention also back to a video that I did a bit over a month ago which was once again going from information that I got from Paula and in this video I discussed Stefan Stearns and his Stefnet account which was his social media and for the purpose of that particular video I was talking about Reddit now as you can see from the watermark I actually first saw this on the docket where he was discussing that Paula had found this and he showed the screen sh screenshot from it so this was a thread I'm pregnant and I don't know what to do and you can see the post was deleted by the person who originally posted it and you have an answer down here from Stefan Sustanet we know that's his account that is proven in the documents so if you go back through the documents that talk about Stearns's um, social media accounts I think it was the Google search then you can see that Sustanet was his account so we know from the documents received from FOIA requests that this is Stern's account and he's put here like it or not this is something you may need some help with you may be scared or embarrassed to talk to a trusted friend or family member but it's probably the right thing to do you need to get ahead of this you need a game plan you need to su you need support first of all him saying you need to get ahead of this that is something that Chris Stearns says a lot about Stefan in terms of the charges and stuff Chris Stearns is like had he told me I would have said to him you need to get ahead of this um, but it is disturbing that there is this post by someone saying that they're pregnant they don't know what to do 
and Stefan has responded to it. It's also disturbing that he was actually frequenting a page called Advice for Teens. Now, at the time that this video was done by the docket, um, he showed that the post itself had been made seven months ago, which fell in line with the time when everything happened with Maddie. So I jumped back onto Paula's channel and had a look at where she was discussing this and she gave the same information and she spoke about it and she spoke about sustenance being Stephen Stearns etc. So then I did my own investigation and now I won't go too much into this because I have explained it in another video and I'll link that video below. But basically from my own investigation, using the Wayback Machine, so that's the Internet Archives, I was able to discover the time that the original post was made. Now I will just clarify because I didn't explain this enough on my previous video. The way the Wayback Machine works is that it takes samples or it copies web pages at certain times. So in terms of this particular thing with Reddit, this particular post was copied on three occasions, which is why I've got three separate screenshots here. So this copying was done at three different times, which is why you can see there's a difference, but that is also why it helps us to find the information that we need. So the first save, which you can see on the right hand side, gives the actual account. So it's got you throw away X, Jack, Z, Jack, D. On the left hand side, it's got you and deleted so that shows that that one was taken a little that copy of the page was taken a bit later after the account was deleted and then there was a post on it made about three minutes later um now the significant thing with all this is the time stamp because we can't find out the account because that account has been terminated on Reddit. That account no longer exists, which would be in line with were they investigating Maddie's case and they had access to her social media. Investigators probably would have got all the data they needed from something like this in Reddit and then remove the account for obvious reasons. But what we need to look at here is the timestamp. Now I'm not saying that this is Maddie. We don't know if Maddie used Reddit. Some people have been like, well, you know, she's a kid, why why would she? But you know, this is a Reddit advice for teens. So we know that she did go on a number of social media sites. We know she had a Discord account, which, you know, quite often I would consider that to be for older kids or older teens and adults. Um, so if she's 12 and she's on Discord, why not be on Reddit? But like I'm saying, I'm not saying 100% that this account was Maddie. But the thing that's interesting here is the time connection. Now, when you look at the time here, you could just about discount this because it says Sunday, February 25th, 2024, 15.30. 15.30 basically means 3.30 in the afternoon. But here's the significant thing, GMT plus 1100. This time 
is showing my time in Australia. In other words, it's saying this was posted Australian time, Sunday, February 25th, 2024, 3.30 p.m. Now, doing the calculations, at the time that I looked this up, the GMT for Orlando was GMT minus 5. So basically you have a 16 hour time difference, meaning you need to go back 15 hours. Where does that land us? This post was made on the Saturday night before Stefan went to Kissimmee at 11.30 p.m. And my speculation was, in the video that I showed before, is this what he was upset about and stressed about on the Saturday night? Because it is one hell of a coincidence that there's this post from a Saturday night that he's commented on and apparently becomes super, super stressed. Particularly given that the post has since been deleted and that the actual user who made the post is no longer on Reddit. So like I said, there's a lot of speculation going on there, but it does seem super, super coincidental that we have someone posting on Reddit on the Saturday night before Stefan went to Kissimmee that they believed that they were pregnant. We have Stefan responding. You also have anecdotes that Stefan was upset and distressed and worried and all that sort of stuff on the Saturday, as well as accounts of Maddie being upset and distressed, etc. on the Saturday. Now I'm going to play one more clip which also may show a little bit more of what could have been going on in Maddie's head at the time of her party on that weekend when everything happened. They had been talking during, again, I'm not part of this conversation, yeah. they were talking about how they had heard um, Lady Gaga's, oh my God, want to take a ride on my disco stick, and they had, Miss Luca, did you know what that song was about? So okay. they've had... But they were all acting very, you know, scandalized, shocked by it. So I'm, yeah. But that's most of my students. They're 12. They're just learning about that kind of thing. Yeah. They're going through sex ed and science class right now. Now, there's two significant things in that part of the conversation. So, so that's one of Maddie's teachers doing an interview with law enforcement. I got that audio from Grizzly True Crime. And first of all, there's the, the discussion of the Lady Gaga song. And the kids being so scandalised by it. Now, that could have been one of those first instances of Maddie starting to realise that what was going on with Stefan wasn't right for a girl her age. And that could be something significant. In terms of this video, it doesn't really tie in with what I'm talking about in terms of the pregnancy discussion or the baby coins but the second part that was said is significant she said that they were currently doing sex ed in science now when you're talking about 12 13 year old girls doing sex ed one of the major discussions that happens in sex ed for kids that age is, of course, unprotected sex and pregnancy. So to me, that once again goes back to the whole pregnancy question. Perhaps Maddie, as a 12-year-old, wasn't completely aware of the birds and the beast, let's say, and maybe having had a discussion in sex ed 
maybe she had started to wonder about the things that were happening between her and Stefan. Now we know that she was wanting those coins and that is very, very disturbing. But also, was she perhaps worrying that she was pregnant or thinking that she was pregnant based on information learned from sex ed? There's a lot of things here, nothing that is substantial on its own. But when you add all these things up together, it does paint a rather disturbing picture. Is it possible that Maddie believed that she was pregnant? Is it possible that she could have actually been pregnant? And of course, from looking at those coins, is it possible that there was some co kind of conversation between her and Stefan about them having a child together? I feel so sad for this child. This guy is such a horrible, horrible monster. And just to think of the things that must have been going on in her head the master manipulation that he was doing to make normalization of things like this because the fact that Maddie actually messaged him about getting these coins shows you that to her and don't forget at this stage this had been going on for several years so to her, he had groomed her so well that she wasn't realising that it was a bad thing. In her head there must have been so much confusion. It's just so sad. Now I strongly recommend going over and listening to the video that Paula did about this because she discusses a few other things that have come out um, some of them perhaps a little bit more disturbing um, if you're aware of in one of the interviews Jen Soto spoke about a fetish that Stefan had and Jen said nah, uh, no way not gonna happen and in this document they talk about a birthmark that Maddie had and we're not talking about on her face that allowed them to identify Maddie and that according to Paula this connected with Stefan's fetish. I'm not going to go more into that because to me it is disturbing, it is beyond disturbing. Um, if you're not quite following what I'm saying there, then I recommend watching Paula's video. Um, she's very careful about how she explains it, but she just goes a little bit further than me in terms of clarifying what she is talking about. So, thanks for listening if you're new to my channel please subscribe please hit the like button and provided YouTube haven't once again turned off the comments for my video please leave a comment below I will however say that if the comments are turned off and you are keen to leave a comment come back a little while later because I am keeping an eye on it now that I know that this is happening with pretty much every video that I put out at the moment. And I will turn the comments back on when I see that they are turned off. And yes, it does happen a few times before they stay on. Um, and this is where you can help me out because it seems that once there are a number of comments recorded... YouTube finally stops turning my comments off. So all the more reason for me to hope that people will leave comments on my video. So thanks for listening. 
please leave a comment as I said and I'll catch you in the next one.